Hey everybody, it's your Average Jeweler again. I'm back today doing something a little bit different. A lot of my videos are much more broad. I try and talk about as much information as possible on any given topic. But today, I wanna to focus in on one of the diamond grading criteria, or they use it for other gemstones too. But I wanna really narrow in. I have other videos where I speak generally on them, but today we're talking about cut, specifically diamond and gemstone cut. So let's get into it. So when somebody is talking about cut specifically, when they're talking about diamonds or even other gemstones, there's a few things to consider. First of all, you have a range in quality. Usually if you're looking at something like a GIA system, you're looking at anything from poor quality to fair, to good, to very good, to excellent. And then you'll get into a lot of, I'll call them either brand name or uh, other accepted terms. Sometimes you'll see superb or exceptional, or they'll use something like that. And it might be their own proprietary cut. It may just be their way of describing it because they have their own criteria. But the big thing is cut is one of those areas, at least in diamonds, that's a bit more scientific. Usually you have a set number of facets, whether it be 57 or 58, depending on whether it has uh, a culet or not, a culet being the, the pointy part of the diamond. Sometimes they make it not so pointy and it's considered an extra facet. And then sometimes they'll even facet the girdle or the part that goes around the outside of the stone that generally the prongs are folded over. And they can put them into different types of machinery that analyze the angles and go into a lot of different things. And that part of it is very scientific. So why are not all diamonds cut to perfect specifications? Well, that has to do with the original material they have. Sometimes the way that the crystal grew doesn't allow them to cut it a certain way, or maybe they're trying to maximize the size of the stone so they don't wanna take a certain amount off. Um, that is one reason why I consider cut to be really important personally, because when you have an excellent or at least a very good cut, you know that you're not just paying for extra weight that doesn't get you any more look. And that does happen sometimes. There's only so much they can stretch that but for me personally, I think cut is an area where you should put some extra money into if you're deciding where you should be allocating your funds, so to speak. Um, with gemstones, it's a little bit different because rather than trying to get sparkle and brilliance out of the stone, they're trying to maximize the color. And so when it comes to colored gemstones, cuts looked at a little bit differently. Um, you don't want it to be too deep because that can make the color re really dark and you don't want it to be too shallow because then you can start seeing through it and you don't get the saturation you want. Now, sometimes they'll use those methods to darken or lighten stones in an attractive way, but you also have to remember that that ultimately has to be put into a piece of jewelry or into a ring, and sometimes stones that are really shallow are gonna be more vulnerable to breaking. Sometimes stones that are really deep don't set right into jewelry and they just don't look good uh, in that way. So those are things that you may wanna look for if you're buying a colored stone. If you're buying a diamond, it really is about that sparkle and that scintillation. One thing that is less scientific on the diamond front is, is how well it's polished on top. You want really, really sharp facets and clean polish. That is something that is done in finishing. Usually it's done by hand, and there can be small little variations when someone is grading the polish that they may deem unacceptable or less desirable. And so that portion, you do get a little bit further away from the scientific part as well. Now, one of the last things I wanna discuss when we talk about cut are the different types of cut. Round cuts are absolutely the most common when you're talking about diamond. When we're talking about other colored stones, depending on the habit of the stone, there may be cuts that are more common for that particular stone. For instance, the growth of a ruby often lends itself more to oval cuts. So you see a lot more oval cuts in something like a ruby. A cushion cut, oftentimes you're gonna see that more with something like a sapphire. So again, the type of stone, you might actually have cuts that are more common 
in that stone. Diamonds are cut round because again, it, it shows off those attributes and characteristics that we love about diamond more than almost anything else. But you have a lot of other shapes, and so I'm just gonna go through them really quickly and let you, let you see what there is. So you have a princess cut, that's gonna be your squared off cut by most standards. You have your cushion cut, which again, almost looks like a cushion or a pillow, and that's gonna be more of your rounded square or rectangle. Um, you have things like heart cuts that are a little less common, more of a novelty, but some people find them very interesting. You have your pear cuts where it's rounded at the top and points at the bottom. You have marquee cuts, which are usually pointed on two ends, and they haven't been as fashionable uh, the last decade or so, but they are something that people seem to be finding out again a little bit more because they're unique, they're interesting, but they can be kind of pointy, so watch out for that. You have radiant cuts, which are meant to be a, a more cushion-like cut, but still shows off some of the, the scintillation and still shows off brilliance a little bit better. You have something like an Asher cut, which for larger diamonds can be a very desirable cut. It's a little more squared, but it does have the points taken off on the end. And then you have an emerald cut, which is another very common cut traditionally associated with emeralds because of how they grow. But in something like a diamond, it can be really attractive. I will say that cuts that have less of the brilliant facet cuts, uh, we call them step cuts, like an emerald cut, where they're more straight in how they're cut, you can see through them easier. They're a bit more transparent. And the reason I bring that up is if you're thinking about specific cuts, that might be a consideration for you because you may find inclusions to be much more distracting in something like an emerald cut. I know I've observed that. Uh, you're a lot more likely to see it because there's less light just bouncing around. And so if you're buying an emerald cut or thinking about buying something like an emerald cut, you maybe want, you maybe want to look at cleaner stones internally. Um, but one of the last cuts that you'll see are oval cuts. And something to watch out for on oval cuts, they'll often, if they're cut a little too shallow, they'll end up with what we call a bow tie effect. And not everyone will notice this, but some people do find it undesirable because it's essentially a type of windowing where you're seeing through the stone rather than seeing all the, the light and brilliance. Those are your main type of cuts, with rounds being by far the most popular. And a few things to think about if you are considering buying any number of them. Um, you'll also want to consider not just how they look in your setting, but how the stones are going to be set in prongs or if they're going to be set in bezels. Uh, things like cushion cuts can be notoriously difficult to get prongs to hold on to them, and so they may be a little bit of a security issue depending on the type of setting it's going into. Um, if you have a really good jeweler, it might not be as big of an issue, but those are things that you want to pay attention to. One more thing I would mention about some of the different shape cuts is that you may get more bang for your buck in certain cuts. An example might be a princess cut. Usually you get a larger table, even though the, the weight of the stone might be a little less. And on top of that, I think in the current market, it's not uncommon to see some of the same criteria in a princess cut stone be a little less expensive than something like a round. Uh, the same might go for an oval shape. Um, definitely some of the, the cuts that are less popular, like your marquee cuts, you're probably going to get more stone for your money because it's not as popular. So pay attention to uh, the price per carat Generally speaking, in relation, every diamond is going to be unique, so sometimes on paper they look the same, but in person there's a reason that one diamond is, is worth more than another. But if you watch the trends, you'll find that some of these shapes are going to cost different per carat than others. Just a little note as, as you start looking into possibly buying a stone. I hope that these added specifics just in relation to cut are helpful for those of you that want that additional information and maybe the more generic references to what cut refers to or what it's talking about on 
some type of lab report. I hope you found this interesting. If so, I hope you'll leave me a comment below about the things that you did enjoy. I hope you'll hit the like button. And as always, I hope you keep coming back so that we can keep learning together. <laughs>